I was say good morning, everybody. I'm Laura Kennedy. If I haven't met you, hopefully I've met your kids at least and said hello to you at carpool. Um, very happy to be here. Very happy to be at school. Kids are happy, engaged. Things are going wonderfully from my perspective here at school. Um, so the agenda for this morning is that I'm going to report just about a few things going on at school. Um, talk about some upcoming events and then I'm going to ask Michael Orman to talk about summer camp. Heidi Lee is going to talk a little bit about admissions and enrollment and then our uh, director of school counseling Allie Hirsch will just say a few words about her perspective on how things are going and offer her services to any of you that may need it as well and then we'll have time for just general Q&A at the end. So just from here on campus we have a lovely new display um, when you enter the building in the, the main hallway that Courtney Friedman put together. It's called Inspiring Individuals. And each month will be dedicated to learning about famous Americans according to a particular theme. And this month is dedicated to learning about uh, Black History Month. And what's great about it is that the work is all showcased student work. Um, so when I saw it the other day, I thought, wow, that looks like such professional work. And it's Miss Brennan's um, class. So it's um, gonna change each month. Um, and for example, upcoming themes will be National Poetry Month, um, Asian Pacific Heritage Month uh, as examples and will feature work from other classes. Um, our citizenship theme this month is respect, which is always a great theme to have for our students. Um, students can earn a recognition from the monthly theme or from classroom goals. And I've really enjoyed getting to know your kids as they come to my office and they sign this citizenship book and it's full of, full of signatures from way back and then they get a card that gets mailed home if they receive good citizenship. Um, our fifth grade su student council is successfully leading a fundraiser right now called Valgrams, which I'm hopefully you've all participated in um, for the NSCPA. We've had over half the student body participating already with three days to go. So there's still time to order. You can order until Friday. Um, one thing to note is we're making sure that every single student receives at least a couple of Valgrams. So nobody's, you don't have to worry if you don't participate, every student will go home with a bag on February 12th, courtesy of, um, of some of the faculty and Mr. Gregerson. Um, Ms. Sirota is very happy to be back teaching outside with recorders and as well as Meadows Singers. And we'll have a performance to share on video later this month that we're excited about. Um, and speaking of performances, there's a collaboration between kindergarten and fifth grade to produce a version on video of a traditional Meadows event, um, Chinese New Year, songs and a parade so look for that, that'll be sent out for viewing on February 12th. It's been fun to see them recording right outside my office. Um, so I'm excited to see that performance. Um, we have a couple of spirit days coming up. So this Friday will be sports team spirit day in honor of the Super Bowl. Um, and then we will also have Lunar New Year and Valentine's theme uh, spirit day coming up as well next week. Looking ahead, spring parent teacher conferences. I can't believe it's that time already, but it's scheduled for right before spring break, March 25th and 26th. Um, and I know some of you are already starting to think about next year. I just wanna remind you that as of last year, we did not take parent requests for teachers. I really trust the teachers to work really hard to create balanced classrooms for the next grade level that includes a mix of all three classrooms, current classrooms. The exception is kindergarten. I'm definitely open to younger siblings having the same teacher as their older sibling. I think that makes a nice transition into a new division and new building and have to have that familiarity. Um, also looking ahead to next year, we're not making any big curricular changes, but we'll be making some small tweaks such as updating our K and one literacy program also in conjunction with beginning school to include a more comprehensive approach to phonics and updating some of our literature. Um, we're also looking at adding a school-wide social emotional um, curriculum that will give us some common language from pre-k to 12 um, and some goals for character and leadership across the school and Allie Hirsch is helping with that along with Kristen Withy. We're excited about that. Um, and the last thing for now, um, parents who are new to the Meadows this year, we're going to be holding a parent Zoom next month um, with the admissions team to hear about how you and your child's experience transitioning to this school um, what worked and what, what can be improved for next year. So look for that invitation if you're new. Um, now I'm gonna introduce Michael Orman. He's gonna, he's director of the arts and he'll be directing our summer camp this year. And before he speaks, I just wanna give a thank you and a shout out to Courtney Friedman who has run that uh, for the last couple of years, got our summer camp up and running. 
and who worked so hard both summers to make it a success. And so Michael will be taking over this year. Um, so Michael, yes, uh, I turn it over to you. Uh, so yes, I, I'm excited to tell you about our summer programming. This year we are we are fortunate that you know even given the circumstances of COVID, we have we have we have been successful at running a, a, a in-person school experience for you know the past six months now, um, and we we are confident that we we can then now. Uh, provide a summer program that is comparable to the, the rich experience that the, your students are getting during your day in school. So we are looking to expand our summer programming. We, we will be uh, releasing uh, our full summer catalog, hopefully in the next uh, two weeks to the broader community. But what we are looking at prior to this year, we have had a, a summer program that really was weekly themes uh, set up so your children would come prior, prior to the community would come, uh, have a week theme. Uh, the experience was, was similar for the majority of the students. Uh, and what we are looking at now uh, is a more content specific camp. So students and parents will actually be able to sign up for specific camps that are their interest in, in certain weeks. So for instance, we will be having a 3D printing camp, a robotics camp, a uh, tennis specific camp, uh, a variation of sports. Uh, then we're gonna have different kinds of fun, uh, fun camps based around skills, activities. For instance, we're going to have a lemonade entrepreneur camp. Uh, so all of these experiences that your students will then get to choose and sign up for. What, and what it allows us to do is, is you know, hone in on, on opportunities and give experiences to the students that, that, that are specific to their interest. Um, it is going to be an eight week long camp starting on June 1st. We will have, uh, we'll have camp basically right after school starts, or school ends. Uh, we will go for the rest of the summer into the end of July. We will be taking the, off the week of July 5th. But uh, other than that, we will have different camps offered every single week of, uh, of June and July. But we're very excited to talk about it. Um, I would, once the, the, the catalog is released, you'll, you'll be receiving more information about how to sign up, what are the, what are the costs, and, and go from there. But again, very excited about expanding our, our camp offerings and providing a, a, a broader experience to our students. Thank you. Great. OK, thank you, Michael. Um, next up, I'm going to introduce um, Heidi Lee from our advancement slash admissions department. She's going to be talking a little bit about re-enrollment in our current admissions year. So Heidi, over to you. Uh, um, I just want to let everybody know. So re-enrollment re will start on Monday, uh, February 8th. Everyone will be emailed contracts. Uh, so look out for that in your email. But in the meantime, over the next few days, if you could go into your My Meadows portal and update any information that may have changed, addresses, um, making sure your family members are listed, um, email addresses especially, but that information is really helpful as the system pulls the information down for the contracts that will be sent out. Um, and those will be due uh, with your deposits on February 19th. If you have questions or um, you know, need any uh, help, please let us know. Um, regarding My Meadows, um, you can reach out to uh, Judy in the main office and she might be able to direct you in the right direction if you're having trouble getting onto your My Meadows portal. Um, regarding admissions, we are having one of the busiest admissions years the school has seen in a very long time. Um, it's really exciting. Uh, Mr. Gruber and I are overseeing some things. We had uh, a change in our office. And for those of you who haven't heard, um, Ms. Orsini has recently left the school. She moved to Wyoming to be with her husband. And um, Mr. Gruber uh, is serving um, in an interim role this year to help us out. Um, and we are have been doing tours every Saturday, um, pretty much since school has started. And they've just recently become uh, probably one of the most popular things we've seen. Uh, Mr. Orman's been helping. Ms. Hirsch has been helping. It's kind of an all hands on deck with the tours and welcoming prospective families to the school. Um, with that being said, uh, it's exciting to see new people, um, but we love our Meadows family. So we want to make sure that everyone is captured um, with re-enrollment. And like I said, if there's questions, please email or call me um, and we're happy to you know, put you in the right direction. Um, Saturday, for those of you who have friends who are looking at the school or thinking about the school, please tell them to please get their applications in immediately. We have um, 
for every spot we have, I want to say we have anywhere from seven to eight applications, depending on the grade level. Um, so please have them get their applications in. Um, kindergarten assessments for outside students will be this Saturday. Um, Ms. Kennedy and her team will be uh, doing those. Um, and for those of you who haven't done the admissions process in a long time, um, for the first time in a long time, we're doing a standardized testing called the IC, I-S-E-E, -E, um, for grades two through eight. Um, and that information is on our website as well as the IC website. But, um, you know, as I said, if there's questions, please let us know. But um, it's an exciting time. We're seeing a number of folks, not just locally, but from out of town who are moving here. So there's a lot of interest in the Meadows and it's uh, because of your great word of mouth that we're hearing that. So thank you for that. And thank you for being part of our community. Thank you, Heidi. Yeah, it's exciting to be a part of this um, record admissions year. And uh, a lot of my time and energy the next month is going into that and this important decision. So thank you so much, Heidi. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to Allie Hirsch, our Director of Counseling, who's spent quite a bit of time in lower school, meeting with kids, doing classes, and just kind of talk about some of your thoughts on how the school year is going, Allie, and um, anything else you'd like to share. Yes, hi everybody. Great to see so many of you. Um, Definitely missing having the sidewalk and uh, sports games conversations with all of you. So we know we know next year is gonna, what we do know is we'll have more chances for sense of community next year. But while we're in this tough um, end of the semester, um, end of the year, this semester, we're really trying to um, think of ways to build community um, as the weather gets better. And so I just wanna talk about a few ways that um, with this fabulous team of working with Laura and Heidi and, and Michael and Claude, we've been able to, well, and everybody else at school, we've been able to try to instill a sense of community, community even though we're pretty isolated um, in, in some ways. Um, so first, Laura mentioned this, but is the physical building of the lower school. Um, there's a really wonderful uh, display, which maybe Laura's mentioned before on coffees, that is kind of a challenge of the week. And so it's a way for students in every grade to interact with kind of a fun higher level thinking question. And it brings the school together because, you know, you can hear the kids talking about, you know, do, you know talking about the different theme. I don't know what it is this week, Laura. Do, what it's, is our it's, theme? It's athletes this week. So uh, oh gosh, yeah. a little bit of a Super Bowl fo focus. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So um, everybody gets, uh, you know, there's some animal questions. There's all sorts of, of little um, challenges and thinking questions. And it's a really great way to um, bring kids out of the classroom in a kind of creative way. So thanks to Laura for coming up with that and helping the kids establish that sense of place at school. Um, the other, you know, the inspiring um, people wall is going to be wonderful. It really will just add this positive feeling for students when they walk by and, you know, talk about establishing mentors, which again, when you're feeling stuck as parents, when you're feeling stuck, if, you're, if your young person is ever saying, this, build, this pandemic feels like it's forever, when will it be over? A real healthy tip is to think about, okay, what would be your dream day if you had a magic wand for a year from now? And let them let them explore what their what their future magic wand day would be. Um, so also, I, it's not up yet, but we're working on a mindfulness wall too that can be interactive for the students, for them to take a minute to breathe, to take a minute to uh, say something they're grateful for. So again, trying creative ways to bring this sense of play and fun and joyfulness for our students um, in this unusual uh, year. Um, in terms of our uh, programming, um, Ms. Kennedy mentioned I'm, I'm in classes a lot, whether I'm um, working with the teacher or just popping in to say, hi, I, you know, this is my third year, year here. So many of the students I've known from recess and it's, it's really nice to see them growing up. It's, 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 what, it's amazing. <laughs> and the kindergartners have been wonderful. I've got to spend many Friday afternoons in the kindergarten classes, really just being there, reading, playing pumpkin bingo, you name it. So it's been a fun way. And I'm, as Ms. Lee mentioned, Heidi, I'm also helping with the kindergarten um, screening and testing, which is just a joyful part of, of this job. Um, but in terms of after school programming, we're hoping that as the weather is nicer, 
Um, and as our upper schoolers need a lot of service hour as, as well as a sense of connection because our high school students are feeling a little bit isolated as well. Ms. Dr. Withy and Laura and I are, uh, and Ms. Whipple, the other middle school counselor are working on ways to use, um, have our lower school students and upper school students have mentoring relationships, play games, do activities, do arts. And once, I mean, I think we're in spring now, right? So <laughs> soon enough, we um, are going to be rolling out some after school op opportunities for grade levels at this at this time. Um, and so stay tuned for that. And again, that's that's my most favorite joy is being able to help you, your families, um, providing some, you know, extended after school time for students in a in a more relaxed and fun setting than um, not to say that classroom work isn't fun. Of course it's fun. <laughs> but last year we did a cooking and crafts class that we're looking to revive as soon as we can. Maybe just the crafts, um, not the cooking. That seems a little risky these days. Um, and then really, I just want to say um, last month's uh, theme was teamwork. And really, this has been a year of teamwork like no other. Um, the, the folks like I mentioned, working with Laura, Heidi, Michael, and Claude, uh, and Kristen Withy has been really great um, for, for us adults to be able to stay positive, stay, um, stay connected to the students in a way that helps their experience be, be as good as possible. And then to close, to any of you who would ever like to chat or schedule a call, please reach out. Um, I, my, my first my, my first promise is to you all as families, if you ever want to talk out something, if you ever are have a tough decision or a pattern of behavior, please um, send me an email, give me a call, and we can chat anytime you want. I can put my email in the chat. Oh, no, I can't, but it's a Hirsch at the meadowschool.org. <laughs> Allie Hirsch. So thanks again, and please hope to see you soon. Okay, thank you, Allie. Um, so we now have time for any questions from, and the it looks like the chat is disabled. I'm, I'm sorry about that. It could have, um, we could have had that going. Um, but since we're live, if there's any questions anybody would like to ask from me or anybody, any of our panelists today. Blake? Yes. Yep, Blake. Hello, uh, this is TJ, uh, Blake's, uh, 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 second. Oh, CJ, sorry. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. How you doing? Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for the nice overview. Uh, this is more just a, a, a more of a global question, and it's not in regards to this individual in particular, but more in methodology. It's sort of with the recently departed Mrs. Arianos. Um, would we find her teaching style more indicative of future hires, or is this more? Uh, I would say more of an outlier situation. Hmm. Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I, I feel like it was a little bit more of an outlier situation. Um, there were aspects I certainly liked about it. Um, but I also don't like people being yeah. dis dismissive of, um, things that work well. Um, I'm somebody who, who have, I have a very broad background oh, for sure. things that work. So I tend yeah. to be very open-minded when it comes to things that maybe I haven't seen before, but yet are working. And um, I believe in her case, maybe there was a little bit more judgment of things without waiting to see what worked. So, but there's certainly um, parts of her philosophy that I really liked. Um, I didn't get to see her in yeah. action long enough, I think, to make a fair assessment since she was only here a very short time, so. But I do, okay. you know, okay. but to your question, I am, yeah. I am obviously hiring a new kindergarten teacher um, and I'm very yeah. happy <laughs> of, for next year for the, the um, All right, good deal. That so I'm very co yeah. cognizant uh, yeah, just, yeah, of fit. Um, I'm looking for a good fit. Um, and I think now that great. I'm here in February, I have a much better handle of what a good Meadows fit teacher is than maybe I did back in October. Well, also face it, we're stuck in a, an environment that's you had to take what you could get to. I mean, we had to have a teacher. So, uh, you know, I, I totally understand that perspective. But it was very interesting hearing we had a 
true clash of uh, uh, thought hit, you know, and is very interesting perspective from a parental level uh, mm -hmm. versus past Meadows teaching. So uh, thank you for uh, the commentary. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. the, anybody else? Questions? I have a question, Ms. And Kennedy. I'm having trouble seeing who's speaking. Let me move to the next page. Now? Yes. Can you see me? Uh, Michael, can you? You're... I, I can see. Yes, I can see it. I'm sorry. I can't really move over the. Oh, move. I'm sorry. Here you are. Yes, Val. See, I see that. Yes. Um, I have a question about if you could give me a little bit more information about the tours that you're having on Saturday. Like, how does somebody. Because we, we have some, a friend of ours, actually, um, they, we work with them and they were interested in the Meadows. So I kind of, I know people are talking about it and I was surprised that you're having Saturday tours. So how does somebody find out about that? And does it have any weight that as a, you know, a parent um, already, do we have any weight on helping them get in or referring them? How does that work? And could you give me more information about what I could do to get them started? Sure. Um, so the Saturday tours um, are done. Uh, people have been doing um, application inquiries on our website, on the admissions side of the website. And so when they do that, um, we reach out and we schedule Saturday tours. Um, they're right now they're at 9 a.m. and 1030 and they're small groups, um, no more than, you know, 10 folks at a time. And we do the masking and social distancing. Um, and the, for the lower school, we start in the beginning school because we usually have a mix of pre-K and a lot of K and some, you know, the other older grades. Um, and we do a tour of um, the beginning school, the lower school, uh, the Center for Fine Arts and our athletics facility for that division. So they get a full sense of what the Meadows is. Um, and as far as weight, um, we would put that in the file so that, that we know that you as a current family um, has, have recommended them and that would go into the process when we're sitting down um, with our admissions committee for the lower school or whatever division they're looking at um, so that it would be in the file so that we're aware of that. Okay. But, and then yeah. And then when, when do they, like, after the, the Meadows family gets kind of enrolled and everything, when does the testing start? When does, when do you make your decision? You know, what's the final date, I guess, of when you can accept applications up until what date? And then when do you make your decisions on those? So um, we as a school up until this year have been kind of on a rolling basis. So it was kind of, if you applied, we'd look at your application at a time. Um, this year, because we have so few spots. Um, we're going to wait and see until uh, we're going to wait and make some admissions decisions until after enrollment is done. So that would be re-enrollment is done on February 19th. Um, and we will sit down in the different committees to look at um, the full pool to make sure that we're making the best decision for the school and the right fit families and the right fit um, for our faculty as well. So um, Ideally, it would be great if they could have everything in um, by the 19th so that we can look at it the following week because we, as I said, it's been very busy and it started a lot earlier than normal admissions here in Las Vegas. Um, and we know that we're not the only school in the boat. We've heard the same thing from counterparts at day school and Dawson and Adelson. So, um, you know, people are chomping at the bit to move to Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, and those that were in public school here that were kind of sitting on the fence about um, private education or independent school education, um, this last year has shown them that uh, there was a value to being part of a community like ours. So, okay. um, so the, fair enough to say by in the February, moment, they should yeah. have their applications in. So, okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Yep. Thank you. But definitely Thank the sooner you. the better, as Heidi said. Yeah. Absolutely. I played golf with a woman the other day who said, oh yeah, my friend is thinking of applying to the Meadows. I'm like, don't think about it. I mean, it's, <laughs> we need to- Hey, uh, that's what sold me was the tour. So, you know, you gotta get the tour in, I think. That's number one. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, the campus sells itself sometimes. It's nicer to have the students here, but I mean, you know, I have a lot of families that I've spoken to on Saturdays that walk on and are just like, you know, eyes pop and jaws yeah. drop. and. I always make the joke with them to kind of break the ice. And I was like, yeah, we probably have some of the most greenery in all of Las Vegas. So it's, it's pretty <laughs> amazing to just, the first time you walk onto this campus, it's, it is an awe moment. And I'm sure a lot of you have been here for a lot of years. Um, you forget it sometimes because you do drive, for, you know, you do drop off and pick up. But uh, for families who haven't been on campus, um, we do have a pretty spectacular piece of, of space to be, to be here with our students. I definitely agree. Right. And 
I know there's going to be some announcements um, coming soon about what we're doing to enhance or improve the campus as well. And to think that it really can't get better, but yet it can. There's, I'm really excited about the future um, of what Jeremy's going to be announcing um, shortly about in improvements we're going to make. But I agree, seeing it through other people's eyes. When I, I know I wrote about this in the blog a few weeks ago, but um, going through the Winsong process and just seeing this campus, these teachers, the whole the whole um, Meadows experience through, we had 25 applicants, um, meeting those parents, doing Zooms with them, and just just seeing how, mm -hmm. how grateful they were to apply and how impressed they were was, was really awesome experience to go through and, and to see everything through their eyes. So other questions? Yeah, I had a quick question. Uh-huh. I have a fifth grader and I know last year the health talk because of the remote learning got pushed to sixth grade. So I was wondering, I, he, my student actually is still remote. Okay. And I was wondering if the health got talk was going to be taking place for fifth graders and if so, yes. going to be um, moderating it. And yes. if the format will be adjusted at all this time. Sure, we actually just scheduled it. That's interesting you asked, it's on your mind. Um, for the end of April, some more information will be going out um, about that. And yes, we will definitely include the remote learners as well. There'll be information going on about that. So is it still being given by, um, I can't think of the doctor's name it's right the, now. Yes, it's the doctors that we have used in the past. And I'm sorry, I don't know the names either because um, the fifth grade team was handling it. But yes, it's the well-regarded okay. people who've given it. Um, they do a separate session for the boys and then for the girls. Yeah. Okay, perfect, okay. thanks. Any other questions? Yep. Okay, and for those of you who came in late um, or if you had people, friends who missed this, it is being recorded and we'll send that out um, shortly as well. Um, and as I've mentioned in other copies, I'm always available to meet with you on Zoom, um, meet off campus um, as well. So. I'm glad to see most of you, I see your names, most of you, I have met your kids and have seen them at carpool or done activities with them. Um, but I really look forward to next year where I get to see all of you in person. And so, okay, so have a great day and thank you for attending. Bye.